Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the All Compassionate, All Merciful, and peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and companions. Mr. Uzaidi Udanis, a President of Malaysia Tourism Council, a fellow distinguished speakers, a participants of this event, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon you. And good morning and greetings from the Islamic Tourism Centre, Malaysia. On this important day, Monday of 27 September 2021, allow me to open by wishing everyone a happy World Tourism Day 2021. May the aspirations and objective of this special occasion be realised and achieved. I am grateful to be accorded this opportunity to speak at the second Malaysia Tourism Gold Summit 2021, an event which will witness the coming together of tourism leaders, stakeholders, and industry players worldwide, held in conjunction with World Tourism Day, in order to address matters pertaining responsible development of tourism. A special round of thanks goes to the Malaysia Tourism Council for organizing this summit conference. It is a noble undertaking by the organization in an effort to look beyond the realm of tables, numbers, figures, and statistics. Because in this industry, each and every individual is a key player. Tourism for inclusive growth is the focus of this year's World Tourism Day. It is a fitting one, even more so in light of the state of today's global economy and ever since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Flowing from that above, I firmly believe that we are the inclusive and responsible development of tourism, the industry can gear itself towards becoming more sustainable via job opportunities, protection of the environment, and the empowerment of communities. Our organization, Islamic Tourism Center, as an agency under the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture Malaysia, or MOTEC, is pleased to take the lead in this drive. ITC was set up in 2009 with very specific aim of developing the Islamic tourism industry through research, capacity buildings, standards and certification, training, and branding. Through its efforts, the Muslim-friendly tourism branding concept was developed and later broadened to include the sphere of hospitality, therefore, namely, Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality, or in short, an FTH. Ladies and gentlemen, tourism is one of the main contributors to the Malaysian economy. In fact, in 2019 alone, tourism was the third largest sector of the GDP, accounting for 15.9% of the total GDP that year. In spite of the figures coming pre-COVID-19, it shows that tourism is key where the domestic economy is concerned, one more from overseas. Adding on to the above, the travel, the Muslim travel market is also one segment that is growing exponentially. Uh, this trend is further reinforced by the fact that studies have also reported that the population of Muslim is expected to grow from its 20 10 tally of 1.6 billion to about one third of the world's 
population at 2.2 billion come 2030. Moreover, the population of Muslim worldwide consists of diverse contexts. Muslims are found across a wide section of the globe, from the Middle East and North Africa region to Central Asia and Southeast Asia. This also means that Muslims around the world come from various races, backgrounds, cultures, and walk of life. This signifies that more efforts and initiatives must be kicked off to cater to the phenomenon above. And this is where the role of Islamic tourism ecosystem via the MFTH model comes into play. My good friend of the industry, let me proceed by reiterating some key basic pointers to note where the Muslim travel market is concerned. Firstly, Muslim travelers' behavior has been noted for a tendency to travel in large groups. That is accompanied by another observation that this segment of travelers have a bigger spending capacity in addition to a propensity to have longer periods of stay. To share Malaysia's experience, allow me to quote some uh, figures of note regarding the uh, Muslim tourist market and its contribution to Malaysia. Pre-pandemic, in 2019, Malaysia welcomed more than 2 million tourists from Indonesia with a total contribution of tourist receipt mounting to Ringgit Malaysia 7.3 billion, equivalent to 1.8 billion USD. Indeed, Indonesia is among the key Muslim tourist markets in this region, with an estimated 230 million Muslim population in ASEAN region and a sizable, of, a sizable number of Muslim travelers for intra-ASEAN travel and the market potential is so huge. While uh, to the Middle East, uh, tourists, we find that they usually travel in large groups with extended families, you know, they stay longer uh, to properly explore a destination. And uh, in 2019, uh, the uh, average length of stay for Saudi Arabian tourists was uh, 10.8. Uh, days and, and for from Kuwait, 10.2 days and from uh, UAE, 9.7 days. Similarly, their per capita expenditure was among the highest at Ringgit Malaysia, 11,360, equivalent to 2,915 uh, 2, uh, US dollars. And you know, uh, and it goes on with other. Uh, markets, respectively. Therefore, the needs of Muslim tourists, on the other hand, are distinctly summarized into two key points. One, the availability of halal food and provisions of prayer facilities. These are the basic uh, requirements of most of the uh, Muslim travels or Muslim travelers when they uh, travel overseas. It is because of the reasons above that this segment is uh, the up and coming big markets and that more and more tourism stakeholders and industry players are recognizing why this industry is the one to be tapped into owing to each niche but very lucrative potential. On this note, it is pertinent uh, to also be aware of some of the trends in travel and tourism that also bears significance to how tourism industry practitioners can respond and cater to this market. This ranges from the preference for digital technology 
to seeking destination information online. Let me quote a George Washington University School of Business study reported that nearly two thirds of travelers are women. Why? In 2018 alone, there were an estimated 63 million Muslim women travelers around the world that all together spend approximately 80 billion US dollars on tourism and travel. While in the MasterCard person rating a global Muslim travel index, GMTI 2021 study, focus was given to the consumer travel and lifestyle trends among Muslims. It was found that it was found that the technology continued to play a very, very important and a key role in helping Muslims adapt to the pandemic environment. They continue to use more technology, including for online retailing. Their attitudes towards higher causes, including religious events and climate change, also heightened since the COVID-19 pandemic. And another travel consultant, uh, Pierre Anderson, undertook a study in 2019, which reveal the uh, importance of online websites, resources for Muslim travelers. One thing to research or get more information about Muslim friendly destination. And it found that tourism board websites were the second favorite source of getting information after getting recommendation from friends and family. So here you can see that it's a very powerful platform, uh, you know, social platform, and also the power of word of mouth. So this is why now we have you know, uh, word of mouth marketing, word of mouth promotion. So this is it's proven one of the uh, very effective uh, source of information for, for general tourists and what more for Muslim friendly uh, travelers from any parts of the world. For you, mentioned Malaysia has been uh, consistently ranked as the top nation in the uh, Global Muslim Travel Index, uh, GMTI, which is an annual report published by MasterCard and Crescent Rating beginning of 2015. Uh, Malaysia acknowledges uh, acknowledge uh, that uh, this achievement stems from the fact that being a Muslim majority nation, halal food and provision of prayer facilities such as uh, musolas or here they call it uh, surau, you know, uh, then prayer mats and uh, ablution, tempat ambil semayang. These are all easily available and accessible. Not only in the in the premises, but if you happen to be uh, in the highway, you can see at the rest uh, area, you can easily uh, stop and perform your prayers. And you want to have more doa, you know, all this. It's, 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 it can be done easily. So this is one of the uh, extras uh, for Malaysia in promoting uh, Malaysia as a destination for Muslim travelers. Flowing from what I mentioned just now, uh, it comes at, as no surprise that uh, the provisions of the above facilities, as mentioned earlier, uh, to cater to the niche requirements of uh, Muslim travel market enhances their stay and experience in Malaysia. While uh, they indulge themselves in uh, leisure activities, be it uh, entertainment, shopping, tours, and as such, provided they are within the parameters of uh, Muslim uh, requirements. You know, you know, they, they need to, to ensure that the, the food is halal, 
and the environment as such uh, will uh, promote uh, peace and security uh, when they travel and when they enjoy all those facilities I mentioned earlier. Therefore, Malaysia hopes that uh, its success stories in establishing and maintaining its position as the top Muslim-friendly destination in the world will also inspire more and more tourism organizations and entities out there to consider tapping into the Muslim travel market and be made aware of the ways to do so, that the benefit they stand to reap from doing so. Uh, and here, not only a call to the uh, international um, NTOs or DMC, but also for local uh, DMOs or National Tourism Board of the states, uh, you know, for the domestic uh, consumption, uh, we shouldn't overlook uh, for the intrastate, for the intra-region travel that involve uh, Muslim travelers, you know, because uh, Malaysian uh, are good, and they would like to spend uh, in many places uh, uh, in very very uh, disciplined manner, uh, which is part also of the uh, most, uh, Islamic qualities when we promote uh, uh, Muslim. Uh, friendly tourism and hospitality. Islamic tourism also means inclusivity. Why? To relate that concept to the focus of World Tourism Day 2021, by catering to the needs of Muslim uh, tourists, we show a readiness and openness to embrace this market. We show that the Muslim travel market it is not just an important segment, but one that is here to stay. However, the Islamic tourism segment is not solely about Muslim tourists alone. It also means employment of Muslim in the tourism industry, a greater involvement of Muslim, especially Muslim women in the workforce, would create a more diverse and inclusive context which is healthy for inclusivity, in inclusivity and sustainability. Given tourism is a pillar of the UN SDGs, ITC affirm, affirms that greater development and promotion of Islamic tourism and Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality will be a driving force as the world recovers and emerges from the pandemic. Tourism is all around us. Hotels, restaurants, theme parks, nature, retail, conventions, airline, you name it. We must ensure nobody gets left behind in this global initiative. As we gear ourselves towards a more inclusive, sustainable and responsible tourism industry. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend of the industry, it is now clear that Islamic tourism is in tandem with the goals of inclusivity with having regard for values such as sustainability and responsibility. From this event, we hope that all of us will be able to get a better understanding of what Islamic tourism is all about. The set of knowledge and the skill needed to tap into this segment of tourism is different given its niche nature. So before I end, thank you very much for your attention. I wish everyone a fruitful and productive session today. So take care and stay safe wherever you are. Let's pray together that this pandemic will be over soon and that the tourism industry will recover more than before and thrive once again. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Alhamdulillah. We love you. Thank you.